Hello friends, welcome to Truth of Physics. Today in this video, I will discuss an important topic on the symmetry operations in classical mechanics. So, symmetry operations uh, is very important in particle physics also. So, actually in the study of classical mechanics, we uh, face many times uh, the symmetry problems, uh, symmetry in uh, symmetry things. So, what are these? Uh, in this video, I will discuss it detailly. So, basically these are two types of symmetry. There are two types of symmetry. Number one is continuous symmetry and number two is discrete symmetry. So what is uh, meant by continuous symmetry? Okay, okay, wait a minute. Let us discuss with this. So if I have this box, if, if I have this box, so if I rotate this box 90 degree, uh, just forgot this uh, forgot the diagrams on uh, diagrams and pictures on this box just think that the total box is yellow color so if i rotate if if the initial state of the box is like this and if i rotate it on 90 degree then it will appear this so as the cross section is square so this will be just the same as the initial state that means after rotating a definite amount a finite amount of angle pi by 2 it is just coming to his initial position initial state initial uh, conditions so that means it is symmetric right after uh, rotating pi by 2 so but so this angle this is a definite angle if i rotate this uh, to 15 degrees suppose this so this is not resemblance in the uh, resemblance to the initial state initial uh, condition initial um, configuration right this is not just same as this this is different so if i so that means there is a uh, finite amount of pi by 2 or 90 degree after which the uh, uh, total system is just coming to its initial state that means this is a finite after rotating a finite this finite amount of rotation that means finite amount of, uh, amount of angle that means this is a discrete symmetry but if like this pen if we think that there is no cap then and no color in the pen then if i rotate it in, rotate in any small amount any infinitesimal amount then it will just be uh, same as our initial state that means we can continuously change its rotation its angle but it will be just same so this type of symmetry this is symmetric right under rotation this is called be symmetric under rotation but this is for this pen the symmetry is the type of the symmetry is continuous as we can continuously uh, change the infinitesimal amount of angle and that will be just same as our initial state but in for this type of object this is the symmetry of rotation rotational symmetry is uh, not continuous it is discrete so these are discrete symmetry and continuous symmetry so now there are another types of symmetry uh, in continuous symmetry we have another three types of symmetry and that are called time translation space translation and space rotation rotation in space means so what are these things we will discuss it today's video and the another type of symmetry that is called our discrete symmetry it have uh, two uh, different um, uh, types and that are our uh, mirror symmetry and the second one is our um, time reversal symmetry okay now today in this video i will just uh, try to figure out the uh, types of continuous symmetry that is our time reversal uh, sorry time translation space translation and space rotation and uh, rotation of space so what we'll do in this video we'll just try to uh, prove or try to um, investigate that our so-called Newton's second, second law or which is the fundamental law uh, the force so which gives us the uh, amount of force f is equals to m d2r dt2 is this equation valid under this symmetry operations under the continuous three types of symmetry operations we will just investigate that thing so we will start to discuss this so first we are discussing the uh, translation in space okay suppose we have to define frame of reference this frame of reference if we call this s dash then this frame of reference is our s okay now this is the origin of s and this is the origin of s dash now we have a point uh, p here at this point then 
if we want to if we want to make the vector position vector then this is the position vector of s and this is the position vector of sorry this is the position vector of our in our s prime frame of reference now what is the relation between these two and if this distance is our s okay this vector is s vector suppose s okay then what happens then we can write this vector or this is the position vector r dash i am denoting it with r dash vector the position vector in s prime and the position vector in s is denoted with r vector then we if we can easily say that r dash is equals to r vector minus s vector then what we want to do we want to just do this then we know that in this s frame the newton's law holds we assume that in this frame newton's law holds then f is equals to f1 we are denoting f1 to denote the force in the s frame is equals to m suppose the mass of the body m d2 this r vector over dt square now is this also valid is this equation also valid in s dash let us understand that so for that we have to just calculate first this term so what will be that just double differentiate it d2 r over dt square is equals to d2 r dash over dt square now multiplying the both sides with m i can write this m d2 r uh, over dt square is equals to just m d2 r dash over dt square now this quantity look at this quantity this is f1 f1 vector now this is equals to this and this term is equals to this but is this quantity now is equals to the amount of force measured in s prime frame that we have to investigate so how can we investigate let us use a very simple example let a point charge or a simply charge small q amount of charge is present in point p and a capital q amount of charge is present at o okay okay now what will the force in f1 that is the force between these two charges okay so that is equals to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 or suppose the constant k q1 q2 divided by the separation distance it's square right so this what this is remind that this is the separation distance between the charges then you can easily understand that for this system for this frame of reference s dash s prime so f2 will be what the what will the force coulomb be force between these two charges that will be simply k q over what as this is just a distance separation distance so that separation distance will be just same in both of the frame of reference as the points are not changing this point two points are not changing we are just changing the system the reference frame okay its individual position vector will change but the separation distance that will not change because the point the two points are just fixed at the two points we are just representing with different vectors due to the different um our different frame of references so k q q over r square so you can easily understand that f1 is equals to f2 now from this relation as f1 as expression is this and this is equals to this and now we can now we have arrived that f1 is equals to f2 so these two are same then what happens these and these are same that means f2 vector is equals to m d2 r dash over d t square and this is what the newton's second law that means newton's second law is invariant under this type of symmetry under the translation in space okay now so newton's uh, so this equation newton's equation of motion is invariant under this translation this type of translation now we we'll understand the rotation in space okay now if our frame of reference is rotated with an angle of theta okay then what happens then we know i'm not deriving that thing okay then we know that uh, the new coordinates x dash y dash in the rotated frame of reference from the rotated frame of reference uh, the position vector of any point can be written like this z dash this uh, matrix will be equals to cos theta 
sin theta minus sin theta cos theta this matrix into x y and z right that means uh, this is what these are the position vector this is the position vector r dash right in a uh, rotated frame of reference and this is what the position vector r that means in our normal frame of reference means our non rotated frame of reference okay now this thing this thing is applicable for every vector every vector in the two systems right as this we have arrived to this point with the geometric ge geometry okay with geometric uh, derivations we have arrived this point this way this is not only for apply only applicable for r vector that is the position vector this is applicable for any vector in the uh, two systems okay so this is applicable for also the force vectors okay the f y vector f z vector okay i am not writing the vector i am just writing the components f z that will be just equals to our so this transformation will be applicable for the force vector also right the force components so from here what we'll get we'll get after simplifying this this will get just x dash equals to uh, x cos theta plus y sin theta similarly y dash will be what minus x sin theta plus y cos theta and what will be the word z dash z dash will be equals to z, just z right because uh, we have fixed our z axis okay now if we double derivative this expression then what happens then we'll get uh, d2 x prime over dt square that is equals to as our theta is not changing with time this is a fixed amount fixed amount of rotation this is not changing with time so the derivative will be applicable only for x y this type of things okay so that this will be just equals to x double prime cos theta plus y double prime sin theta if we multiply both sides with m then we don't know what this quantity gives m d2 x dash over dt2 but we know this if we multiply m with both sides then this will be multiplied with m then what happens this this term will be m d2 x m d2 x over dt square but we know that in our initial state this is denoted our uh, this is our what fx right the force component in the x component of the force then this can be written as fx cos theta plus fy sin theta similarly uh, okay wait yes this thing now similarly we can write that this thing from this thing we will get that m d2 y dash over dt square is equals to f that means m will get the same thing so f will get just minus okay minus uh, fx sin theta plus fy cos of theta okay and now from here what we will get fx will be just equals to this uh, just equaling uh, equating this fx will be equals to this and fy will be equals to this that means just these two things are same the right hand side are same that means these things must be same Ma means this fx dash fx dash must be equals to this quantity m d2 x prime over dt square similarly for fy and fz that means what is this the equation of motion newton's equation of motion for the rotated frame of reference that means after rotating that means after rotation in space also the equation of motion is invariant that means the equation of motion is invariant under the rotation rotation in space also so it is um, uh, this equation is invariant under this type of symmetry also now we will discuss the translation in space now what happens in translation in time right suppose we have uh, discussed or we have uh, do done a experiment like that uh, like the similar fashion like this we have we, we have a frame of reference and there are two charges small q and capital q then the uh, coulomb force will be what if one 
will be equals to uh, just k capital Q small q over r square the separation distance square now uh, okay now if we change the time that means at we have measured the time in our clock and it is just uh, denoting suppose 10 am and okay just 10 am and 10 in 10 am this formula is valid we have measured this okay now after some time after two hours suppose so after two hours what will happen is this form will be same so that will have to understand so uh, we'll assume some things in this case okay the things will be just trivial in this case that uh, so here the time is translating like the space first case the space was translating here the time is translating that means we are uh, measuring the we are doing the experiment in some later time okay so that means the t dash there it was the position the position was changing position was translating translating now the time is translating t dash is equals to the initial time t plus some amount suppose this is constant s s amount of time and this s is two hours like after uh, in we are measuring that we are doing the experiment in 12 o'clock okay so as this is a constant so what happens dt dash will be equals to just dt then we can do what and r dash is equals to r because we are not translating the space here so r dash equals to r that means d2 r dash over dt dash will be just equals to d2 r over dt dash square dt square because of this as dt is equal just equals to dt so uh multiplying both sides with m it will be given over m f1 will be m d2 r dash over dt squared and that is equals to our this m d2 r wait this is r okay dt this is r d2 r dash over d t dash square now we will assume now we'll give some assumptions like if we calculate this if we cal not calculate this if we measure the force okay forget about this relation forget about this relation just measure the force in some time and just measure that force after two hours just measure the coulomb force after two hours then experimentally and by our consciousness we can say it is proven it you can see that the result are just same the force into different times in any time the force will be just same the equal this will give just equal force amount of force that means at 10 o'clock the force f1 is just equals to the force measured at 12 o'clock that means f1 is f2 is equal and f1 is equals to this expression and this is equals to this expression that means from here i can say that this is equals to just f2 that means what this means f2 the expression of force or the amount of force is given by the same equation the newton's equation of motion so the newton's equation of motion is invariant under the translation of time also so this is proved okay so under this type of symmetry also the newton's second law newton's second law is invariant okay so i think that you have understand the concepts that how you uh, have to use or you can deal with the symmetry operations okay these are very important in the upcoming videos i will make an another video on the discrete symmetry okay in that video i will discuss the uh, invariance of the newton's second law in that kind of symmetry also so i hope that you have understood these concepts so if you are benefited then uh, obviously share this video with your friends and take care of yourself thanks for watching